common problem that uh, people are facing these days as they sit down to work on a video project is that in a typical edit, they may be working with media that is coming from three or four different sources, three or four different cameras that may be shooting a video using a different style or, or a look. And any given camera may have menu settings that uh, the user has set that also affect the way the video looks. And so as we sit down to work on a project, uh, as we're working with this different camera footage, or perhaps uh, using stock footage that has been purchased to go with the project, you know, we're just working with a variety of different uh, styles and looks. For example, in a recent documentary that I did, I, I shot uh, most of the footage using a DSLR camera, a Canon 6D, and it gives this wonderful, beautiful film look. Uh, but then I had to resort to footage that was shot uh, with my older Canon uh, XF300, and that has a completely different look. Uh, even though they're both coming from Canon, the uh, footage looks really a, a lot different. This really looks a lot more like a, a standard video camera. It's very sharp, clear, crisp, but doesn't have that nice film look. And so what, what happens is as, as we're moving along in the video, uh, we've got this beautiful film look, and then we go to this clear video look and back to film look, and well, it's just kind of jarring to the senses to have such a, a difference in the look. And so what we need to do is to match up our older footage to kind of look a little bit more like film. And there's a lot that we can do with the effects and filters that come with Edius to uh, match up our shots. And so in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can create more of a film look with our older video footage. Okay, so the first thing that we probably want to do is uh, go to our effect bin and work with our, under color correction tools, work with our YUV curve. Let's throw that onto our clip. And that takes us to the information palette. Let's click on our YUV curve and add uh, just a little bit more contrast to that and uh, a little bit more black. And we can do that uh, by adding a typical S curve using our YUV curve. If you're familiar with Photoshop at all, you are uh, going to know about this S curve that you can use to bring a little bit more contrast uh, to your shot. And the reason why we like using this tool as opposed to other tools is that we can control various aspects of our footage uh, rather than just add contrast to the whole shot. Here we can make adjustments to the whites up here, the blacks down here, and then separately work with the mid-range of the clip. Whereas if we're working with some of the other filters that allow you to adjust your contrast, you don't have as much control over what portion of the um, footage or, or range that you're going to have control over. Okay, so when you've got something pleasing with your YUV curve, let's add some more filters. Let's go to uh, just video filters this time and look for soft focus because one of the things that make this old video footage kind of stand out so much is that it's just so clear, so sharp. And so we want to just back off on the sharpness a little bit. And we can do that with a soft focus filter. Let's drag and drop that onto our shot. And by default, Edius adds some soft focus when you drop this on. And usually, in most cases, too much. So we need to go in and adjust that. Not only does it add too much uh, soft focus to make it look like film, it also uh, adds too much brightness. Look, it's adding 20 points of brightness to the shot. Not sure why. Let's bring that back down to zero or even just a little under. And then let's back off on the blur so it's uh, not quite so much. You can also experiment with the radius and uh, see uh, how you think that that might be affecting everything. I usually like to have it around 20. Okay, so that uh, helps out quite a bit. Let's take a look at it in as it matches the uh, previous shot. I think we've started to make some big improvements. 
One of the things that makes this DSLR footage look so much like film is because of the ability of the camera to capture such a narrow depth of field, uh, depending especially on the lenses that you're using. And uh, this helps to give it a nice film feel, film look as well. And so if we wanted to try and add some of that uh, in the shots, we could do that uh, with our mask filter. Let's uh, go look for a mask filter. Here it is here. Let's drag that onto our clip and click on that. And let's maybe open this up a little bit. And uh, let's go after our rectangle tool and just draw by, with your mouse, just by clicking on your left button and uh, dragging down, create a, a rectangle there. And then what we're going to want to do is go over to this button here to select our filter. And the filter that we want to work with again is the soft focus. So let's click on that, hit OK. And then we want to go in and work with the settings again on that soft focus. Back off uh, down to zero at least uh, uh, on our brightness. At the moment, we're not able to actually observe the changes. Let's just uh, cancel out of that. We need to actually click on the filter to see our changes. Uh, so with that box checked, let's try adjusting our settings again. Let's bring this back down to zero. And at this point, uh, it's a little hard to tell where we should have our blur. Let's hit OK for now. And let's go down to where it says Edge and click on the softness. And let's add about oh, 200 pixels onto the uh, width of our soft edge of this. OK, and now that we have uh, that soft edge defined, let's go back to our filter and uh, experiment with our settings. You notice as you bring it right down, it's uh, very sharp at the edge still. But as we take it up to about 76, we see that there's just a nice little uh, blur to the edges there. And that might help give us just a little bit more of the film look. Once you have one edge defined, you can uh, do a copy and paste of that and place it on the other edge. And let's try making a, another one and see if we can rotate that. I guess not. OK, let's get rid of that and then just make a, a new one here. Uh, Edius, when you create a, th a third rectangle there, uh, it remembers and adopts the settings that you have already chosen for the, the preview or the first one there. So you don't have to go in and, you know, create a new uh, filter and uh, adjust the settings on that. It just simply remembers it. So we could uh, do another copy of the top one and then bring that down to the bottom. So now as we look at our clip, we see that uh, it adds a nice kind of a soft focus to the edges of it. And depending on the clip that you're working with, you might want to increase any one of the ranges of this to uh, add more uh, blur to uh, emulate the out of focus or the narrow depth of field that you have in other shots. For example, if this particular shot didn't need to be completely in focus for the whole width of the clip, we might extend this portion out and add a lot more soft focus uh, to our image. And that would give us just a little bit more um, of that uh, narrow depth of field effect. You know, so what you can do is set up a, a very generic one with just a subtle soft focus to the very uh, borders of the clip. And then depending on the clip itself, you may go in and make uh, fine tune adjustments for any given clip. So with those filters, it's uh, looking just a little bit more and more like a, a DSLR clip. It uh, looks like it's still, to match up these shots on either end, it looks like it could use just a little bit more chroma. And uh, so we might uh, 
go with our color balance tool as well and add just a touch of chroma, a couple points perhaps. And uh, if you want to see the difference that we've made, uh, we can just unclick all of these real quick and we'll see that this is the original clip. But then as we add all of our filters, we get back to more of that film look that matches our DSLR footage a lot better. Now, once you have defined uh, a film look that you like and that is matching your other footage fairly well, then what you can do is select all of the filters that you applied using your shift key, select all, and create a user preset. Save as current user preset. And at first, it might not seem like anything has happened. Uh, you're wondering, well, what did I do? Well, go back to the effect bin, and you'll see that your filter is showing up here. Uh, right now, it's called YUV Curve plus Soft Focus plus Mask plus Color Balance. But let's uh, rename that. Just right click on it, and let's call it uh, Film Look 1. And uh, you'll notice that it has a big yellow U there. That means that it's a user preset as opposed to the ones that have the purple S on it. And uh, that stands for system uh, presets. So next time as you're looking for your preset, you can find them very easily by looking for the big yellow U and then look for that film look. Let's uh, try dragging these onto another camera that I used on this shoot. I was also working with footage that had been shot with a Panasonic uh, camcorder um, that also, again, has a very sharp look to it. This is kind of more of a consumer camera, one of these camcorders that fits in the palm of your hand. It makes it very easy to get into tight corners and very quickly get some shots. But again, you end up with something that looks so much different than the footage that was shot with the DSLR camera. So let's try uh, using our new film look filter and drag it onto this group of clips. I think we have four or five here. Oh, this is a DSLR camera. Uh, you can probably tell just by looking at it. But then as we get into this group of four clips, we're using this very sharp looking uh, camera where everything is in focus. And uh, while it's great for those family home videos, it uh, just doesn't match very well with our film look uh, from the DSLR. So let's select all four of those clips that was shot with that type of camera. And you can do that. You can select all just by pointing to right above where those clips start. Drag your mouse down as you hold down your left mouse button and then start moving your mouse to the right and that lassoes the clips. And then we can take our new preset, our custom user preset that we have defined with the film look and drag it down, place it on any one of these clips and Edius will, will uh, put the effect on all of them. And then as we look through it, it uh, it is at least getting closer to that uh, film look. Now, uh, as we look at it closely, we see that uh, this camera, because it's a little bit different than the uh, Canon XF300 that we just worked with, we might want to add just a little bit more general soft focus. Notice what happens uh, when we, let's select any one of these clips and go to the information palette. Rather than bring in this one user preset filter as one complete unit, now as we go to our information palette and click on any one of these clips that we have just uh, applied that user preset to, we'll see that Edius does break that up into the original four filters that we used. So we can go in and fine tune it. And because every camera is just a little bit different, you might find that you have to do that. That's why we called this the film look preset number one, because you might end up creating a particular user preset for every camera that you work with. We notice that the edges are nicely blurred, perhaps too much for this camera. The Canon XF300, it records at 50-bit uh, uh, and it uh, is a, just a, a much more professional camera than this consumer camera. And so as a result, our filters here are just probably too strong now on the borders 
but not strong enough in the center. So let's go into our soft focus. Let's add just a little bit more blur to the, to the whole shot, but let's go into our mask tool and back off on the edges so that we have less blur on the edges. And I think that that looks just a little better. Might still be just a little tad too much around the edges. Okay, and then once you've got something you're happy with there, perhaps what we should do is create a user preset for this camera. Save as current user preset. And this time, perhaps rather than just call it Film Look 2, Film Look 3, perhaps we should identify it more in regards to the camera itself. And maybe rename this one to the Canon. So you get the idea of uh, how you can create user presets that help any individual camera match your main footage, which many of you probably now have moved to a DSLR camera and need to match up your old footage to that. All right, so for now, that does it for using EDIUS filters to create a film look and match up your cameras.